And you think that stimulus or no stimulus, the market is showing some signs of a, a more confident uh, consumer and small business uh, it, it, with the big ticket items they're buying. And, and what do you, why? Why with all the, the things that are still front and center for us that are so worrisome, Jim? Why are people, in your view, confident? Well, there's still a lot of <clears throat> there's still a lot of individuals on Main Street that are suffering. There's no doubt about that. A lot of businesses that are suffering. But I'll tell you what, aggregately, Joe, we're coming off of one of the strongest growth quarters we've ever had in our history. Probably grew GDP at around 35 percent in real terms. Um, and we're seeing um, behaviors by companies and consumers that just are not consistent with the national narrative that this economy is hanging by a thread and consumers and businesses are, are petrified with fear and they're, they're uh, hunkering down for a, a collapse. It just isn't. I mean, consumers are buying, as you mentioned, houses, cars, durable goods, stuff that t it takes confidence to buy and stuff that you have to feel secure in your financials to uh, do. They're, if you ask individuals right now, there's more individuals that will tell you that jobs are easier to get then we'll tell you that they're hard, they're, they're, uh, you can't find them right, right now. That's, that's inconsistent with the narrative. Um, if you look at companies, their capital good orders, core capital good orders have returned to new record highs or the highest levels since 2018. Uh, that's investments into the future, and you only do that if you're optimistic. ISM new orders for uh, both the service sector and the uh, manufacturing sector are above 60. Um, temp jobs is a percent of toll jobs are rising every month. That's a precursor to better job creation down the road. Look at look at even headlines on on stock buybacks are coming back and, and IPO activity is has really been strong. I just don't see the type of private behaviors that tell me we're on the edge of a of a cliff economically. And then look at the financial markets. Stocks are rallying. Not only that, but they're, they're being rallied or led by the most cyclical small caps and cyclical sectors that are most sensitive to the economy. Look at uh, the bond yields backing up. Look at commodity prices rising, the dollar safe haven premiums coming out. To me, the financial markets and corporate and individual behaviors tell a very different narrative than I hear about every day. It's funny because you think the biggest risk for next year is that we run too hot and that uh, you, yep. you, you point out we got a 77 basis point uh, 10 year and tips at 1.7. So the Fed were at least a percentage point lower than, than we should be just from what the Fed is doing. And, and that that can't last. They're going to have to they're going to have to give up the, uh, the what is it? Give up the goat, I, ghost something. I don't know. They're yeah. going to have to raise. Right. I think so, Joe, eventually. I, I, you know, there's been a lot of talk about yield turf control and whether the Fed will do it or not. Well, the Fed's been doing it. That's very clear, because when you got a bond yield at 70 and inflation expectations in the bond market 170, they're holding yields artificially low, at least by 1% already on the 10-year. And, you know, the, what doesn't get enough discussion is that historically throughout the post-war era, policies have about a one-year lag or longer before they start to help the economy. So much of the stimulus we've dumped on this thing in the last year by the Fed, by the Treasury, much of that stimulus has yet to even start working to help the economy. But as we go into the fourth quarter and into the first quarter, it's going to start to have a, that traditional lagged impact. And so we could have a, a, a surprising uh, solid and healthy, maybe even accelerating economic growth over the, over the coming quarters because of what we did six, nine, 12 months ago. And I don't think that gets enough attention. And if that happens, if the economy stays stronger than expected, even in this quarter we just started, I think the Fed's going to have to start to back away from quantitative easing, and that would leave a lot of upside room in, in bond yields. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.